Um, Foreign Secretary, uh, as you know, visited uh, Maldives on the 27th and he left this morning. Came in at late night, 27th, uh, almost, you can say 20th morning, early morning. Um, so he had essentially one day here, which was yesterday. He left this morning for Vienna. He had an important meeting there. Uh, this is his second meeting in a matter of about 10 days. As you know, he was here on the 10th and 11th of February. Uh, prior to his visit, uh, we had uh, Secretary West who came in from the Ministry of External Affairs who came in as envoy of the Prime Minister, that's Mr. Ganapati. Uh, so this is part of our sustained, uh, sustained engagement uh, with the Maldives in, in, in working closely with, with all concerned uh, in, uh, in uh, taking uh, the process forward uh, and uh, trying to work with all concerned in facilitating uh, what we would see as a solution. Uh, that would be satisfactory uh, to the parties uh, involved. Now, uh, during his current visit, uh, the Foreign Secretary had uh, very extensive meetings. Uh, he has, uh, of course, uh, called on the President uh, twice. Uh, he has met uh, the leaders of all uh, the major parties. Uh, and this time, I think he has also been able to meet uh, uh, representatives literally from every political party in all these. It's been a very extensive process of consultations in which uh, I think every stakeholder in the political process has been has been uh, uh, met, uh, has been uh, contacted, and uh, I think uh, their views have been taken on board. Now, uh, of course, uh, here uh, we are playing the role of good offices and working with the parties to the extent that they would like us to. Uh, so I think the whole idea is to is to see how. The parties themselves, uh, you know, can uh, take their own uh, agenda forward. Uh, and I think uh, last time when Foreign Secretary was here, you would be aware that uh, he had uh, facilitated uh, with the uh, Office of the President uh, the uh, adoption uh, of a discussion paper entitled Maldives, Elements of a Possible Way Forward. Uh, and this uh, paper had been accepted by all concerned. I think uh, there have been press releases in the website of the Office of the President, and uh, the website of the TRP, and the press release by the NDP. And uh, the uh, idea was to see how this process was moving forward and what more could be done, and how in any way that we could be supportive of this, this exercise. Now, during this current visit of uh, the Foreign Secretary, um, he also was invited by the convener uh, of the All-Party Consultative Committee uh, Mr. Mushtaba, which whom, as you know, was appointed by the President to uh, convene the all-party meeting, which follows from the agreement that was reached when the Foreign Secretary was here last time, that the party would meet to decide on days for early elections, uh, would meet to, to work out the modalities of any amendments that have to take place. Uh, so this time the President suggested to the Foreign Secretary that he should also uh, address the all-party consultative committee while they were meeting yesterday, last evening. And, uh, and Mr. Mustafa convened the meeting, and I think it was uh, it allowed for broad interaction with, with many parties, not just uh, some of the major parties, but also many of the other parties that were uh, present in this particular meeting, the Jamhuri Party, the DQP, the Gombi Itihad, the Dalat Party, uh, the People's Alliance, all the parties uh, that, uh, that have been part of this process uh, were also present, and so we could have extensive consultations and uh, understand everyone's point of view uh, more clearly. Uh, there was some broad, uh, I would say, measure of agreement in, uh, in the important principles that uh, uh, were being followed by all parties. Of course, first of all, I have to underline that it was, uh, it was uh, good to know that the parties have met three times uh, as part of the APCC process under Mr. Mustafa, and that they have, uh, they have identified certain areas uh, based on which they would continue discussions and take, take the process forward. Uh, and uh, here I think the principles that we have identified, which we will of course circulate to you as part of our uh, statement, is if I can read out, continue dialogue on the way forward, including, including possible amendment to the constitution, and en enactment of legislation for cons institutional reform. All parties recognize the need to undertake the necessary amendments and legislations within a quick time frame in the People's Majlis. Broad agreement on the need for early elections. And, this process, and, and for this purpose, the All-Party Consultative Committee and further consultations of all major parties would 
continue. So these are the broad principles that, that we identified. But of course, I think the parties uh, are continuing their engagement and I'm sure uh, the sense we have, and I think that optimism is shared uh, all around is that, is that uh, there is a purposefulness about this exercise and that they would uh, be moving forward uh, um, expeditiously. And I think everybody understands uh, across the board that uh, early elections uh, uh, are uh, uh, an important part of the way forward. But as part of the early elections, you need certain amendments, uh, certain legislative uh, enactment to be undertaken, certain essential reforms uh, that uh, have to be undertaken to judicial uh, and other institutional capacities. And uh, these are important measures uh, in, the, uh, in the effort to address the political situation in the moment. So this is just a brief overview of what has been. I, I just want to underline that uh, that it is uh, part of India's commitment, and it is also uh, a part of our very special, friendly and cooperative relations with the Maldives that that we are uh, engaged in this process. Uh, it is, uh, I would say, uh, a good offices approach. It is a facilitatory approach. It is based on uh, mutual uh, mutual uh, consent. And certainly, uh, whatever is done is done with the full uh, cooperation and, uh, uh, I would say, support of the parties involved. Um, and uh, uh, I would say that it also reflects the historic relationship between India and Maldives, where there is so much of interlinkage in terms of our uh, respective, uh, respective uh, economies, our respective uh, security interests, our respective uh, uh, bilateral uh, interests that I think uh, this sort of uh, process is something that we are uh, uh, happy to, to, to assist with. And, and uh, from what we understand from our Maldivian friends across the board, each and every party yesterday made it clear that, that they would be, they were very happy to see us, uh, uh, Foreign Secretary and other senior dignitaries from India playing uh, a facilitatory supportive role. And they would like our process to continue as and when the need arises for our friendship with the people of Maldives and we would work with all concern. And he also pointed out that uh, you know, Prime Minister, when he had come here on a bilateral visit in November last year, he had gone to the People's Majlis, he had addressed the People's Majlis and he had spent time with each and every member of parliament, uh, just a few minutes with each and every member of parliament to underline uh, the importance of our relationship with Maldives as a country and as people and not, uh, let's say, individual parties or the, the government of the day. So uh, I just want to categorically deny that this question was raised or responded to. Uh, uh, Hamdur Pranabhi Tehli, uh, do you want the Indian government want any deadline for our election? Look, I mean the parties are discussing these issues uh, and, and I think uh, it's part of the all party consultative uh, committee. Uh, the majlis will cons uh, convene. Uh, this is clearly, uh, clearly something that has to be discussed uh, uh, within the domestic parameters. Uh, definitely the fact that uh, early elections have to be held has been, I think, universally recognized. And each and every party has conveyed to us that early elections uh, is uh, a sine qua non. This is something that is agreed all around. When the date of elections is, is just a question of matter of working out the, the details between the parties. Uh, you know, there are logistics involved, there are other aspects involved, they will have to work it out. And we are happy to, uh, to, to you know, uh, uh, continue to follow the progress uh, in the consultations uh, as per the dates uh, involved. Sir, uh, Mr. Sandhikiri, I just want to uh, clarify something. Just now, uh, what you said, uh, did you mean to say that uh, all the parties involved in the uh, political uh, issues and uh, to solve the uh, problem uh, agree with uh, an early election? One thing that we discussed yesterday in the all-party consultative committee meeting, uh, rather the convener put across, was uh, but there were some uh, some points that everybody could agree on across the board, whether it was party A, B, or C. And one of these issues was uh, early elections, which, as you know, has already been uh, part of the earlier agreement, uh, which had come out uh, in, the, in the in the website of the president and was announced and was part of a broad framework uh, of understanding that was reached during the foreign secretary's last visit. But this time, uh, the consultations were much wider, and every party, whether in the majlis or not, was represented. And I think all people who were sitting there uh, confirmed that uh, that early elections is something that 
is uh, is something that they are in agreement. Uh, and I want to ask uh, something on, uh, regarding the last night's uh, uh, all party talks. Uh, we heard that uh, uh, during all party talks uh, last night, uh, foreign secretary, uh, foreign secretary forced uh, all the uh, political parties who, who support the current government uh, to uh, agree on a, a date uh, to be finalized uh, before 2013 to help the uh, presidential election. Uh, if, uh, um, before 2013 and before end of the 2012, and uh, we heard that uh, after the uh, political parties uh, participated last night, uh, said no to his uh, request. Uh, so uh, he uh, gave uh, he asked MDP to uh, continue with their protests and order. No, I think uh, let me clarify that what foreign secretary said was that. He was interested in knowing the views of the parties and what would be the lowest common denominator. That means what everybody could agree on, um, which is far from what the parties would want individually. What we are trying to see is what is the common acceptable point of view of all parties. And uh, that is what was conveyed yesterday. Uh, so I want to clarify that there was no effort to uh, leave alone force. There was no effort to even, uh, in some senses, uh, move the parties towards any decision that they may not be willing to. And uh, and certainly, I think, uh, you know, uh, our efforts has been to ensure that there should be, uh, that there should be no disharmony, that there should be a, that there should be an atmosphere of calm and peace, conducive to the holding of, uh, of elections whenever that is held. And our effort has been to tell all the parties concerned that this principle is one that is, is, is should be consistently applied across the board. So the question of telling, are telling any party what to do doesn't arise, uh, particularly as you say, that are telling MDP to continue a demonstration is absolutely out of the question. Uh, I want to categorically deny that. And to say that uh, yesterday's talks were in a very, very positive uh, approach. I mean, Foreign Secretary was asked by the President to go across. The convener invited him. And all he did was to you know ask, seek from the parties what is their lowest, um, what is it that all parties can agree to? And which is what I said. They've agreed to the fact that they should be uh, there should be early elections and the all-party consultative committee would hold further consultations. Uh, the need to undertake necessary amendments and legislation within a quick time frame in the people's matters. And continued dialogue on the way forward, uh, you know, to amend the constitution and to enact though that legislation which would be necessary uh, to take the process forward. So on that note, uh, uh, you are denying the fact that uh, Foreign Secretary had uh, submitted a proposal or an agreement uh, for all the parties to agree to early elections. No, it's not a question of, uh, you know... Because there was a, a rumor that uh, there was a document that, that is uh, an yes, agreement uh, that was uh, put forth to the all-party uh, talks so that everybody can uh, agree to early elections. No, what there was was the agenda, the general agreed items that all the parties had been consulting uh, on and uh, and I think what was listed was the fact that there was agreement on a broad number of areas uh, that the parties had already agreed to and what we wanted to do was to find out what were the parameters of this. I mean, is it that something, is it something that we could take as being the essentials, the principles on which the parties would operate and that is the one that I have enunciated to you. So, uh, uh, I think if you if you look at it uh, carefully, uh, the elements that have been put forward uh, yesterday were those which were already contained in 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 the in the agenda that the convener had drawn up. I think there was no contradiction. What we wanted to do was to see, uh, you know, whether these parameters are those that could be uh, taken forward. And I think we were we were quite happy to note that everybody agreed that uh, discussions were going very well. All the parties were sitting down and meeting, which was not the case uh, 10 days ago. Uh, all the parties were happy to contribute to how to take the process forward. All felt that there was a responsibility on their part to, to, to get some sort of a, a satisfactory uh, arrangement whereby the Majlis could meet, convene and uh, enact certain amendments and legislation necessary for early elections. So essentially the way forward was quite uh, quite, quite clear based on the, uh, based on the, uh, their own discussions and, and I think uh, our idea was not to say that here's a paper in which you must take forward. Um, there were various papers floating around but these papers were all part of uh, text that has already been used by the various parties and 
there could have been one or two ideas here and there that didn't suit some parties and the idea was to bring it into an area which all parties could agree to. So I think the idea that there was a text which uh, you know everybody had to sign on to is, is not correct. There was general uh, agreement on some issues and there was also try attempt to see what can be further taken up. And what we arrived at yesterday was what, what all parties could be comfortable with. And wherever uh, necessary, they would continue the discussions. In fact, discussions continued even later in the evening, and we are yes. confident that they will continue to take this. Last, last two questions. Uh, uh, has, uh, has India proposed a, a timeline for, for the amendment of constitution and the, the early elections? That's my first question. And the second question is, uh, has India talked with the all parties whether uh, the, the, the president would be able to uh, open uh, tomorrow's session in, in, in the parliament, whether there was any discussions uh, regarding that in all, in all party discussions? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I think there was general sense that uh, you know the Majlis, once it convenes, will have to go about its business uh, as expeditiously as possible. Uh, that is why we have said, uh, you know, within a quick time frame, um, but I think that was also a sense that we got from all the parties that uh, that there were some important things that have to be had to be uh, enacted that had to be uh, adopted and uh, these priorities would be placed before the budget and the parties would take it forward. Has India uh, proposed a timeline? No, I think we we are not in the business of uh, you know we are trying to see what is uh, what is uh, possible within what the parties want. But what we certainly have said was that a quick time frame, and that I think is also something that all parties agree that it should be as quick as possible, um, uh, because of obviously these are fairly, uh, you know, these are issues that need to be worked out in Parliament. We don't know what sort of uh, time this will take, but our idea is that it should be as soon as possible, so that the process can move forward expeditiously. And uh, and uh, as far as uh, you know, the convening of the Majlis is concerned, I think it is everybody's desire that it should be convened, uh, uh, you know, in the manner that is within the norms of democracy and within the constitution of Maldives. And uh, that the parties would work together in a responsible manner to get uh, the results that uh, the people of Maldives would expect them to. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, what if last question? Sir, I'm looking from Yadav. My question is now, there's a... Uh, Hopefully, everybody is trying to uh, hoping that uh, this will go is, uh, the way which is most beneficial to the nation. But we, uh, still, we are in doubt of the frame lines. I mean, the dates of how it will go. But on the other side, we are not knowing that uh, MDP is now demanding so many things and so many hahus are there. So, while uh, all these procedures are taking place, uh, our economic our economic situation is very bad. It is going to be very bad, uh, worse than last year because last year also we were very bad, and uh, with all these things, uh, we might have to face uh, much worse uh, situation scenarios this year. But uh, last year also, when we were in your pro uh, problems, we can remember that uh, <coughs> India has granted loan without signing the agreement also. So, so such a close relationship we were having with India. So in this year, if uh, with all these problems, if we have a situation like that, if the scenario comes like that, will India help on this? Uh, well, let me uh, say something. Our engagement with Maldives is much deeper, much, much multifaceted than most other countries. And there have been a number of occasions where our requests have been made to us and India, uh, without thinking twice, has always come forward to assist Maldives. In the recent case, we were asked to uh, you know, uh, expedite part of the $100 million rate line that was agreed last year and we immediately agreed, not only we agreed, we delivered. There was also a request to uh, roll over the treasury bonds of SBI. We did not even issue a press release, but uh, I would like to you know, inform the media that India has done it. The idea of this visit of Foreign Secretary as well as the earlier visit of our Special Envoy was to underline how deep 
is our commitment to the peace and stability of Maldives. How much we value the relationship which has stood the test of time and our continued desire to engage with every player, with every stakeholder who wants peace, stability and constitutional order in this country. That, that has been our effort and this has been underlined. These visits are, you know, a series of engagements. Sometimes the progress is very, uh, you know, uh, very fast. Sometimes the progress, because the process is complex. And number of institutes are involved, number of parties are involved. There are things that have to be done under your particular regulation or act, which has to be discussed in the parliament. And things cannot be prejudged. The effort of India, if I can reiterate, has been to engage as deeply, as intensely as possible with all the stakeholders in the Maldives. And I think I am confident in saying that this engagement has been found to be of great use and has been appreciated by across the board. Difference of opinion is something that we you know, all live with and we take forward. Our effort has been to take forward the best possible consensus line that has emerged and then build on it for future dialogue. Because our engagement is not a one-time engagement. It's a continuum. Continuum and it will continue. So I think on that note, uh, I would like to uh, you know, end this press conference unless my colleague has to uh, add uh, that we are always supportive of whatever uh, what we are doing and we continue to do so. I think that we are always to be repeated from you, sir.